This crowd has not departed early. I just want you to know that. I know you've been tough on the fans here. I did hear the first thing that they said is that they will all be staying for the entire game. So that's good. Now, n not to belabor the point, but that was a big topic of conversation all week. I have no earthly idea why. Uh, is that, are you channeling somebody else's inner soul by, by saying that? I, I haven't heard that from too many other coaches before. No, I mean, I just say how it is, you know, and um, worry about what we control. It was just something that we taught our players, you know, that's out of our control. And um, we, we've had f phenomenal crowds here uh, just last year. So I'm sure we'll get back to that tomorrow. You, you haven't been here that long, but the, but, the, but the crowd so far are taking your orders well. Uh, let's, uh, we were chatting off the air about, about the time of the game. I mean, you, you guys like an 11 o'clock game. You get the game out. You, know, you, may, you may need to talk to them again. Hey, you know, worry about what you can control. You can't control the scheduling and the time of it. So, you know, you just start earlier tomorrow morning. Easy for you to say. <laughs> you've got a you've got a regimented schedule. Um, let's talk about about your team, uh, Coach, because everybody's very high on them. There's still some debate uh, that there will not be any debate after tomorrow about uh, the level of competition. But you seem moderately pleased. Uh, yeah, we we've played well at times, and the the good part is we've played really well on offense, defense, special teams. So it's not like you know, we have an area where we say, okay, well, we've got to play well now. So that's been done. It just hasn't been as consistent as we'd like. And so, you know, we've just got to play the way that we have, you know, in certain halves throughout the season and put it together versus a really good team that has a lot of really good players and has been coached well for a long time. You think about Ole Miss and you think about Lane Kiffin teams and, and you naturally focus on the quarterback, but your defense has made quite an impact. And I know that's going to be critical tomorrow against Will Levis. Yeah, it is. You need to pressure him. And, uh, you know, this is a really talented, really good quarterback. And, um, you know, so we're going to have to cover really well and, and get on him. And, you know, they have their running back coming back, as you know, who's going to be fresh, fresh, right in time for our game. So um, <laughs> very timely suspension. But, um, you know, we'll get him at their best. Well, he did miss the Florida game. And maybe they weren't as worried about Florida or something. So. <laughs> That's what we wanted, uh, Coach. Uh, um, just, just. I mean, it's an it's a unique setting. I, I, I mean, Ole Miss and Kentucky. There's not much history there. Uh, you've got uh, Kentucky in the top ten. You're you're almost in the top ten. Uh, fans care about that stuff. Do you? I, I care about the final ranking. That's the only one that matters. So um, I know it's fun for the fans and to watch the stuff come out, especially, you know, when the playoff stuff comes out. But none of it matters till the end and. Um, you know, when you play in the SEC, if you win, you'll be fine. So, you know, take care of business on the field and the rankings will come. We're talking to Coach Lane Kiffin uh, the eve before a game. Uh, you, you mentioned controlling what you can control, it, but the one thing you can control is who your quarterback is. It, you kept, I don't know whether you kept the media in suspense or it was just a suspenseful competition, but uh, how do you feel now? It was a very competitive competition, and both guys did some really good things. And, um, you know, Jackson's a starter now, and, and he has played really well at times and played much better uh, since he's taken over that role. And so that's been good to see, and we're going to need him to play really well because defenses are going to get tougher and tougher here uh, starting tomorrow morning. You, We've talked to you so often uh, in the offseason about all these issues outside of the football field. And I realize in the season, it's not easy to think about anything else, but recruiting never ends, uh, especially with the, the early signing day. How are you uh, in this program navigating all, all of these things that uh, run concurrent with the actual season? Well, it's just, it's, it's always ongoing. I mean, I wouldn't think the night before a big game or a day before a big game, you know, I just came from a press con conference, you know, announcing, you know, our, our Grove Collective you know, coming together and um, as one. So it, it is what it is. Uh, you need those things to be competitive nowadays. And, you know, it's not the old days where they just go to the team because that was their favorite team growing up. And now there's a salary involved. And so just like most people, uh, especially young people, that, that's, that plays a big role. And we've seen that around the country and different programs all of a sudden sign a lot of really good players all of a sudden. So uh, it's a factor, obviously. And... Pete, a lot of a lot of young people want to play for you for because of your philosophy, and I mean I know it's frustrating because recruiting is, but do you, do you feel like you're able to to get 
the message across effectively, though, when there, when, when there are extraneous issues clouding young people's judgment? Um, no, not the way that you'd like, and it is what it is. And so, you know, just like in recruiting, you can recruit kids and have these great relationships and, you know, they say it then, hey, we'd love to play for you, we'd love to come there, love to go to Ole Miss, but we're going to make all this money somewhere else, and um, you can't fault them. So, you know, that that is where we're at now. And so you can argue about it, you can complain about it, and then you can get passed up, and or you can figure out a way to be work around and be competitive. Before you go, uh, you mentioned the, the day before the game. I, I don't know how much has changed. It just seemed like this would normally have been a day where you're not doing press conferences for collectives. You probably wouldn't even be doing something like this. You'd be meeting with the TV crew, and, and that would be it. Uh, do, do all these things get in the way, or are you just used to all the – the schedules and all the all the all the, the new things that are part of a head coach's responsibility. You just add them on and find a way to do it. Get up earlier. So <laughs> we still met with the TV crew today and and had a press conference and had practice this morning and we'll go back over and uh, have have a team meeting and then go to the hotel tonight and have more meetings. You guys uh, feel better about your new assignment uh, yeah. about getting to bed earlier. <laughs> You're a very good teacher. I mean, it just took one. It just took admonishing this crowd one time, and the yeah, right. <laughs> got them excited. Lane Kiffin, thank you very much. All right, Paul. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.